In a prison in Germany, bank robber Zeki is finally released from jail after a year of imprisonment. He walks all the way back to town and buys a bunch of beers before meeting with his old friend Zeynep, who has made some unwanted modifications to his old car. Zeki asks about the million euros he had stolen before going to prison, and Zeynep explains she buried them somewhere safe. She takes Zeki to a school and gives him a phone with a location recorded on the GPS, but when Zeki follows the directions, he discovers a gym was built over the digging site. Moments later, Zeki goes to the adult club Zeynep works at and the owner immediately begins beating him up, reminding Zeki that he owes him 2,000 euros. Zeki promises he'll get his money back soon and the owner accepts to give him a room until then. However this room turns out to be one of the bar's displays, so Zeki has to be careful and not let clients think he's working. That night, Zeki discovers the school is looking for a new janitor and decides he'll apply for the job since janitors get full access to all the rooms. The next morning, Zeki goes to the school for an interview and doesn't care when his car hits a line of bicycles. He tries to open the door to the gym but it's locked, and he bumps into a teacher named Lisi, who has a kick me sign on her back. Following Lisi's directions, Zeki goes to the principal's office and sees a bunch of people waiting for an interview, looking overly dressed for a janitor. He also sees Miss Noor coming to complain about her class 10B, who has thrown paint at her face. However Principal Gerster says she can't do anything about it. To get rid of the competition, Zeki breaks the fire alarm, making everyone run away. When Gerster opens her office door, Zeki tells her it was a student who activated the alarm. While Gerster turns it off, Zeki spits his gum at the student and threatens with violence to stop him from snitching. Then Gerster interviews Zeki, thinking he's here for the substitute teacher job, not the janitor. At first Zeki tries to protest, but when he finds out that teachers get a spare key to the gym and a salary of 2,000 euros, he quickly accepts. Now he only needs to find a way to fake his qualification because he needs to hand them in the next day. When he tries to leave, he finds a kid blocking the door and simply gets it open by throwing a kick, not caring if the kid falls. Meanwhile Lisi is trying to talk to her sister Laura, but she's embarrassed by her and ignores her. Next Lisi tries to stop a student from smoking, but since Lisi's so sweet, nobody in the school takes her seriously. At that moment Zeki shows up and takes the cigarette from the student, putting it off on his own hand to scare the students away. Lisi wants to repay the favor and Zeki asks her to get together to talk about their syllabus. Sometime later, they meet at her house and share an awkward conversation. Lisi brings tea but Zeki asks for alcohol, so while she searches her fridge, Zeki puts some sedatives in her cup. As soon as Lisi returns and takes a sip, she falls asleep. Then Zeki searches the entire house for Lisi's academic certification and tries to copy it, but the printer refuses to work. So instead Zeki copies the files into a flash drive. At that moment, Lisi's roommate Caro arrives, so Zeki has to think fast. He takes Lisi to her bed, then takes off his shirt and lies down next to her, pretending to be asleep. When Caro peeks inside Lisi's room, she assumes she's having an affair and leaves them alone. Zeki leaves a few minutes later, telling Caro that Lisi just drank too much. The next morning, Zeki puts on glasses to look smarter but also fills his bag with beer cans before entering the school. He sees Lisi around but ignores her, making her feel used. After stealing food from a student, Zeki walks into the teacher's room and finds Noor, who says she can't stand the students anymore and proceeds to end things for herself. Soon a bunch of students surround her to take pictures because her broken juice bottle makes it seem like she's bleeding, but since she only fell from the second floor, she isn't dead and an ambulance soon comes to take her away. Principal Gerster holds an emergency meeting to discuss how to deal with Noor's 10B class, which is formed by all the troublesome students in the school. While Zeki secretly pours alcohol into a juice carton so he can drink at work, Lisi offers some very good ideas, and Gerster decides she will have 10B and Zeki will take over Lisi's old class. When Lisi goes to 10B, she's disturbed to find the whole classroom is a mess and the students don't pay attention to her, no matter if she speaks sweetly or yells. When she picks up chalk, a slimy substance sticks it to her fingers, and when she tries to wash it off, the faucet breaks and soaks her from head to toes. Then she tries to dry herself off with a towel, only to find out that it has been smothered with a black substance. Humiliated, she tries to leave and finds feces on the door handle. Lisi rushes to see Gerster to ask for a way to share the responsibility with someone. However the principal asks her to leave if she cannot handle the pressure, leaving Lisi in tears. Meanwhile Zeki cringes at how goody two-shoes Lisi's previous class is behaving. Instead of teaching them, he orders the students to bring their favorite movie every day for them to watch in class and the one who chooses the best movie will get better grades. He also keeps taking the students' food and reads a magazine for the rest of the class time. In the evening, Zeki gathers a bunch of tools and uses his new teacher's keys to enter the school's gym, where he starts digging for his money. He also installs a little sensor that will warn him if anyone comes by. In the meantime, Caro fixes their printer, which finishes printing Lisi's academic results. By looking up the details on the computer, they figure out only Zeki could have done it while Lisi was asleep. Worried and suspicious, Lisi goes to the school and in the principal's office, she discovers Zeki handed her own paperwork with the name changed. 
Zeki's sensor tells him someone is nearby and he goes to investigate, bumping into Lisi when she's trying to leave. Lisi calls Zeki out for using her diploma, threatening with going to the police. Zeki asks her to name her price but all Lisi wants is her old class back. The next day, they request Kirsters to swap their classes, which she accepts after lots of begging. The first time Zeki enters 10B, he finds male genitalia drawn on the board, and when he tries to grab something from the cupboard, his hands are caught by mouse traps and a slimy black substance drops on him. As the students laugh, Zeki sits at his desk to do a roll call, but all the students raise their hands at the same time no matter the name. When Zeki tries to stand up, he discovers the chair had super glue on it and has to tear his pants to take it off. Tired, Zeki goes to his car to leave, but putting his key in activates a prank that covers him with feathers. Gerster sees this on the security cameras and calls Zeki to her office, allowing her to have a good look at his behind thanks to the hole in his pants. That night, Zeki keeps on digging with bigger tools and changes clothes there to go directly to class in the morning. He notices there are quite a few students missing, but he's come prepared with a paintball gun. He immediately comes out and begins shooting at all the lazy students, perfectly landing every shot even when the students try to escape by climbing the fence. Once everyone is inside the classroom, Zeki tells them he just wants them to stay quiet for his period and he doesn't care if they study or not. Moments later Lisi comes by to borrow some chalk and notices one of the students is crying. When she tells Zeki about it, he just tells the girl to cry in silence. Later in the evening, Zeki's digging is interrupted when the bar owner calls him to kick him out of the club. When he puts his things in his car, he accidentally breaks a window, and to make matters worse, soon it begins to rain, so he can't spend the night in his car. Moments later, Lisi and Caro hear some noises in the garden and grab some stuff to defend themselves before going out to investigate. As soon as they find the mysterious man, they start beating him up, only to discover it's Zeki. Lisi accepts to let him stay in her house as long as he promises to teach the students for real, and even gives him some books to prepare a proper class. Caro also advises him to control the class's leaders because if they respect him, the others will automatically follow. To get ready, Zeki reads all his students' profiles and discovers most of them are micro-criminals. Later during swimming class, the students are ignoring Lisi again. Zeki joins them and throws a girl into the pool without warning, scaring the others into joining the class as well. When two boys get into a fight, Zeki tries to stop them and gets kicked in the groin in the process. Furious, he pushes the student into the pool and keeps him underwater until the boy apologizes and leaves in tears. After class, Lisi calls the boy's father to convince him not to sue, but the father thinks his son needs tough education and agrees with their methods. For lunch, Zeki takes Lisi to Zainab's club, finding the way Lisi is embarrassed by the dancers very amusing. He learns that the class leaders want to be dealers and adult dancers in the future, which is why they don't want to study. Later that night, Zeki gets an offer from an old criminal friend to go robbing again, but he turns it down. While digging through the gym, Zeki finds a time capsule buried several years ago with letters from the school's previous students, including younger Lisi. There's a picture and a letter from her expressing how important it is for her to become a teacher someday which Zeki finds very touching. He gets drunk and goes to look at the school trophy display, furiously breaking the glass when he realizes he had a bad life because adults didn't support him as a kid. Eventually Zeki falls asleep on his desk and in the morning, the students take advantage of this to give him a makeover. Everyone laughs at him as he walks with makeup on his face except for Lisi, who takes him to the bathroom when he begins feeling sick and offers her support, not laughing when she sees they left a message on his rear too. When Zeki goes home, he discovers Laura is about to do something crazy because she's depressed, apparently everyone thinks she's an ugly loser. To make her feel better, he takes her to see Zainab, who gives her a complete makeover. Then Zeki drops Laura at a student party, where everyone is now impressed by her looks. Sometime later, Zeki takes his class on an educational tour to a dealer's house, which is disgustingly dirty, and the guy is far from glamorous. He also takes them to see some working girls, whose living conditions aren't any better. The students witness what the life of an actual criminal looks like and finally decide to choose a different career path, so Zeki advises them to join the drama club. When they return to school, he also tells one of the girls that she actually has great grades and she could even skip a year, it's her behavior that is keeping her back. To get better, she needs to join the science club, so Zeki advises her to befriend the nerds. The girl notices a fight and immediately cuts in, using her years of bad girl to defend the nerds from the popular students that are bothering them. She easily wins the encounter and when the nerds prove to be friendly, she asks them to let her join the science club, which they accept. Sometime later, most of class 10B auditions for a Romeo and Juliet play, and they actually do quite well. However Zeki thinks the play is too boring and old speech can't be understood. Since he won't stop complaining, the teacher in charge of the drama club quits, and Zeki has no choice but to take over. He and the students decide to rewrite the play and make a modern entertaining version. As weeks pass, Zeki continues digging the tunnel through the gym, but he also begins falling for Lisi as they spend more time together. He also becomes very fond of his students, who are starting to behave under his attention now that he's taking this seriously. 
One afternoon, the teacher's ratings given by the students are released on the internet, and Lisi is disappointed because she never gets selected for any category. Zeki tries to comfort her and explains that for the students to like her, she must be seen as cool. In order to help her, Zeki takes Lisi and his students to a station, where they paint graffiti on a train. Lisi has more fun than she expected and impresses the students with a wonderful piece of art. Unfortunately the police arrive and interrupt their fun so everyone has to run away, but Lisi still considers an evening well spent. The next day at school, all the students begin treating her better and actually listen to her. She gives an excellent class that even impresses Gerster. For the next field trip, they take the students to a farm for a project. The children are playing around with the tools used in the farming process, which includes a gun with hormone injections. They try to play a prank on each other, but instead they accidentally shoot Lisi. Now Zeki has to carry her home and watch her go crazy with excitement as the hormones make her act like a dog in heat. Seeing this, Laura begins to worry, because people from child services will be home soon. It turns out their parents died some time ago, and Lisi has been taking care of Laura since then, but if they see her like this they may take Laura away. Suddenly Lisi passes out as a side effect of the hormones. When she wakes up a bit later, she sees Zeki and Laura talking to an official from child services and to her shock, Zeki is pretending to be Lisa's caring boyfriend, even kissing her to keep up the act. They have a lovely meal together with the official, who is impressed by Zeki's cooking skills and the fact Laura got another teacher as a significant other, so it's decided Laura can continue to live there. In the evening, Zeki finally finds the money that he had been looking for. At first he celebrates, counting the money with a burst of happiness, but suddenly he starts crying because he realizes that money isn't enough to be happy anymore. Afterward, he stops by the club to pay the owner and Zainap the money he owes them, then he shocks them by saying he likes the teacher's life better. Soon the day of the play arrives. Laura is a bit disappointed that she only gets to work behind the scenes because she would like to be Juliet and kiss the cute guy playing Romeo, in fact she's memorized all of Juliet's lines. Zeki decides to help and pours a powder into the actress drink that makes her feel sick. Now Laura can take over the role of Juliet. When the play starts, it shows they've changed the dialogue to modern speech and the setting is done in a modern abstract style, but the public loves it and laughs at the modern words, considering them jokes. Laura gets to kiss her crush, and at the end of the day, the play gets second place in the competition. The next day, Zeki shows the gadgets that the science club has made to Gerster, who is so impressed that she offers Zeki a permanent position if he wants it. At gym class, a student performs a high jump, but when she lands on the mattress, she sinks and gets stuck. It turns out that's where the hole to Zeki's tunnel is, and once Lisi gets the student out, she enters the tunnel to investigate. As she reaches the end, she finds Zeki, who came back to fill up the hole again. He's on the phone discussing everything that happened with Zainab, and Lisi is devastated to overhear the truth, feeling that Zeki used her. She immediately slaps him and tells him to quit this job or she'll call the police. Failing to explain he is a better person now, Zeki agrees to go away. Later at the club, he can't stop staring at a pencil case that his students signed for him. The next day, Lisi arrives at the school to discover the students are covering for Zeki by telling Gerster that they made the hole as a prank. Today's the big test for class 10b, and before it starts, the students take out different pictures and stare at them. Lisi is confused by this, and the students explain that Zeki had advised them to bring a picture of what they love the most to keep them motivated. Apparently Zeki had one in his drawer too, and when Lisi checks, she's surprised to find the picture of herself that she had buried in the time capsule. At that moment, Zainab arrives with a letter that Zeki left for Lisi, saying that he's sorry for breaking her trust and explaining that he had decided to start a new life, so he's giving her all the money to repair the gym. Zainab adds that since Zeki can't get a new job with fake paperwork, he's on his way to rob a bank again. While a recovered Noor tells Gerster she isn't coming back, Lisi tries calling Zeki, but the call goes straight to voicemail. Then she asks the science club to use their science project to communicate with him since the gadgets are in the backseat of Zeki's car. However when Lisi can finally make contact with Zeki, his crime partner breaks the machine. Fortunately at that moment, a few students find Zeki in the car and ask for his help, making him realize they truly need him. Zeki tells his partner he won't return to a life of crime and leaves with the students, who make Zeki feel very emotional when they grab his hand. Later in the evening, Zook goes home and gives Lisi a box that she thinks it's some kind of stolen object she must hide. However, as she runs away, the box accidentally opens and she finds a dress with a flower inside. Zook asks Lisi to be her prom date, and Lisi accepts before they kiss. When they arrive at the school, Gerster calls them to his office with big news, everyone at 10B passed their tests with great grades. Gerster wants Zeki to stay as a permanent teacher, but Zeki comes clean and tells her he isn't qualified. Since Gerster's too desperate to avoid having another troublesome class in the future, she forges a high school diploma for him and allows him to stay. Afterward the new couple joins the prom party to celebrate the start of their new life. Make sure to subscribe and turn on notifications so you can watch more videos like this. Thanks for watching.